Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chicken, sausage, peppers, and potatoes. That's right, I do wish this recipe had a more exciting name. You know, something catchy like John's Chicken and Sausage. Or maybe Chicken and Sausage John. But it doesn't. This just simply goes by the four main ingredients. Which is fine, because once you make this and fall in love with it, which you will, you'll get to name it yourself. So you got that to look forward to. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. And the first step here is going to be to partially cook some sausage over medium heat and a little bit of olive oil. And what I have here is four links of hot Italian sausage. And the reason we're only going to partially cook these is because, of course, these are going to roast in the oven with the chicken. So all we're going to do here is cook these for about, I don't know, maybe three minutes per side, which is going to accomplish two things. It's going to make these firm enough to slice into like two inch pieces, but also it's going to render out some of that amazingly flavorful fat, which is the key to this whole recipe. So I gave that first side about three minutes, and then we'll flip those over. Whoops, hold on a second, I got to reposition these. We've all heard that old saying, when sausage is the vittle, make sure your longest links are in the middle. And then speaking of rendering that flavorful fat, what we'll want to do once these are turned is take a knife and give them the old polka polka. And as you'll see, that's going to cause a bunch of that beautiful, beautiful fat to run out. And as you'll see in a few minutes, we're going to use that to coat all our other ingredients. So what we'll do once that second side is cooked for about three minutes or so, and they feel like they've firmed up a little, is we'll remove those from the heat and let them cool down until they're safe to handle. And once that's happened, we'll go ahead and take a knife and cut these into serving pieces, which for me is going to be about two inches or so. I've never measured. I just go by eye. And as you can see, that sausage is still nice and undercooked in the middle, which is no problem because we're going to roast this in a very hot oven for like an hour. And then what we'll do once our sausage is cut up is transfer it back into the pan and reserve it along with all those accumulated juices and fats. Oh, and by the way, if you do this ahead and those fats kind of harden up in the pan on you, you can always pop that pan on the heat for a few seconds to remelt those because we do want those in liquid form. But anyway, once that's done, we'll just set that aside and move on to our bone-in, skin-on chicken thighs. And yes, you can use boneless skinless if you don't want it to be as good. But this is what I'm recommending. And what we'll do to prep these is take a nice sharp knife and make two deep slashes in the skin side right down to the bone. And what that's going to do is let these cook a little bit quicker, but it's also going to help it absorb flavor. So we will go ahead and slash those as shown. And then if you want, you could do a little optional trimming. For example, this little piece of fat's kind of unsightly. So we can clean those up a little bit if we want but they're probably fine as is. And then once our meats have been prepped, we can move on to the vegetation, which must include some kind of peppers. And what you see here is a just rinse bowl of some beautiful heirloom peppers from the market. But the good news is literally any pepper's gonna work, including just basic sweet bell pepper. And what I did was cut those, seed those, and cut them in half or quarters, depending on the size. And I'm gonna go ahead and toss those into the largest mixing bowl I have, along with some sliced onions, both red and yellow. And then we can also go ahead and toss in our fourth major ingredient, some kind of potato, in my case, some quarter Yukon Golds. And then what we'll do before we season this up is transfer in our chicken thighs, as well as our chunks of sausage, along with, of course, any of those accumulated juices and fats. Make sure you get every drop. Like I said, that really is the key to this whole operation. And then once that's all been transferred in, we'll season this up with some kosher salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, and a fairly generous amount of dried Italian herbs. And I'll give you the exact blend on the blog, but it has the usual suspects, rosemary, thyme, oregano, etc. And then last but not least, I decided to give it one little extra drizzle of olive oil, because I think I have that phobia. I'm not sure what it is in Latin, but it's the fear of roasting without enough fat. So I added a little extra. And then what we're going to do, and why I picked my largest mixing bowl, is that we're going to get in there with both hands and give this a very thorough mixing. Okay, I want you to get in there and get in there deep, and thoughtfully mix this for a few minutes so that all those ingredients, especially our slashed chicken thighs, are completely coated with those flavorful fats. And yes, of course, if you want, or you don't have a large mixing bowl, you can just mix this in your roasting pan. However, I do find this easier. But of course, that's going to be up to you. You are the method man of your method man. But either way, we're going to mix that very thoroughly before transferring it into our roasting pan, at which point we're going to do a little bit of arranging. We're going to make sure our chicken thighs are as evenly spaced as possible, and we definitely want the skin side up and exposed. And then sort of the same thing goes for our potatoes. As much as possible, we want those exposed to the heat. And really, that's about it. Our onion, pepper, and sausage distribution doesn't really matter as much. And once that is arranged to our liking, I'm going to give it one last drizzle of olive oil because of that condition I have, as well as a little bit of extra salt 
No, it's not too much. We have a ton of food in that pan. But anyway, once that's set, we are ready to roast. So let's go ahead and transfer this into the center of a very hot 450 degree oven for about one hour or until our chicken is cooked through. And if everything's gone according to plan, once that comes out, you should be looking at one of the most gorgeous pans of roasted food you've ever seen in your life. I mean, come on, look at that. But fair warning, something like this can look amazing, but still not be cooked. So we'll want to take a fork or a knife and make sure our chicken's nice and tender, as well as obviously also our potatoes, which in my case, happily they were. So I proceeded to finish this off with some freshly chopped Italian parsley. And that's it. This recipe that doesn't have any official name is done. And what I love so much about this, besides everything, is the way it creates its own sauce. And you may be thinking, that's not a sauce. That's just sausage fat, chicken fat, and olive oil. Well, that is true. But we also have a ton of moisture from our onions and peppers, which is combined with all that fat, to create some of the most beautiful and delicious pan drippings of all time. And usually I can wait till I plate up before I do the official taste. But I'm sorry, this was just looking and smelling too good. So I went right in with my favorite bite, which is the sausage. There's just something about sausage roasted like this. It kind of firms up and caramelizes and somehow seems to get extra sausagey. And then almost equally as amazing would be the roasted potatoes, which I would love just roasted plain with salt. So you can imagine how amazing these are roasted with all those other ingredients, not to mention being dipped in the aforementioned pan drippings. Just incredible. As is, of course, our chicken. Just so moist and tasty. It really is kind of extraordinary how much flavor that sausage lends. Which reminds me, if you were wondering where the garlic and cayenne were in this recipe, that spicy Italian sausage took care of all that. Okay, so depending on which variety of sausage you use, you may have to adjust your seasonings. And then yes, I did go ahead and play one up, because I felt bad I did the tasting shots out of the pan like some kind of savage. So I guess we're just gonna look at this. But if it makes you feel any better after the camera went off, I scarfed that down and it was incredible. But anyway, that's it. Chicken sausage, peppers and potatoes. Another classic example of the whole being greater than the sum of the parts. And not just a little greater, like way, way greater. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.